Hello and welcome to another episode of Scott Reed's Comics. Today I'll be covering Marvel Super Action, starring Captain America, number seven, published in 1978. On our cover here, we have a great action scene. Captain America sliding down a cable, and in the background, in the background his three foes for this issue, uh, Batroc's Brigade. Batroc himself, the Living Laser, and the Swordsman. And it's got one of these great um, covers with a word balloon. Batroc says, each of us alone is your equal, mon capitaine. Together we are invincible. And the tagline says, beware, Batroc's brigade. This cover is uncredited. I am thinking it might be Sial Buscema with John Romita finishes or inks. Um, same with this corner piece here. This is a reprint, as we'll see on our splash page, of uh, Captain America 105, originally presented in Captain America 105. So that would have been published in 1968. So 10 years later, Marvel Super Action started out by reprinting some of these classic old um, Captain Americas, including some of the Steranko ones as well. So... It's uh, long, uh, long overdue to have some Kirby on this show. So here's our first foray into Jack Kirby, and one might argue Jack Kirby at the height of his powers. Um, In the Name of Batroc is our title. Great splash page here with a World War II scene. Uh, another magnificently meritorious Marvel masterwork by Stan the Man Lee and Jack King Kirby. Dan Adkins, embellisher, Sam Rosen, letterer, Batroc, uh, Batroc's Brigade, troublemakers. Colorists weren't credited uh, at this point in Marvel's history. I have a suspicion this was colored by Marie Severin. I'm not certain of that. She, I think, was in the bullpen at this point and doing a lot of uh, work on various titles, uh, Hulk and some of the others, uh, but also just did a lot of bullpen work, and I think coloring was, was one of her big responsibilities. So this uh, arrow caption says, No, your eyes do not deceive you. That's Bucky Barnes running toward us, as he was three decades ago. If there's a better way to start this yarn than with a World War II battle scene, we apologize. We just couldn't think of it. And now, let's move. Typical Stan Lee, just going right at the reader, addressing them, breaking that fourth wall down a little bit. And again, gorgeous Kirby artwork here and Dan Adkins was was a great anchor for Kirby did not overwhelm Kirby's pencils or make them overly smooth like some other anchors might have um, didn't erase his elaborate backgrounds or anything like that so good work here these two are going to be a, quite a combination in this issue and here we see Bucky who passed away uh, at the end of World War II is not back in fact we have Cap here in a theater watching footage of he and, Bu and Bucky and just being overwrought still with grief and guilt. He thinks, I still can't believe that Bucky is dead, even after all these years. Perhaps it is because my mind refuses to accept the fact that my own carelessness was to blame. Had I been more alert, had I acted faster, I might have saved him. So Cap can't get out of his own ma mind here. And... Um, to get another great shot of Bucky there up on the screen. You were a great team, Rogers. Too bad the kid didn't make it. He'd have gone over great with the teeny boppers. And now they're Sharon Carter. Sharon, the girl I love, Cap continues to think. We've spoken of marriage. We've dared to dream, to hope. But I realize now it can never be. If my enemies ever strike at me through her, no, I can't even bear to think of it. Rogers, wait, what about the show? What's your answer, Rogers? So Steve is getting involved with um, S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Sharon Carter, but uh, in typical Stan Lee melodrama, he realizes that um, he, can't, uh, he can't place her in that kind of danger by being in a relationship with him. Sexist, but this story is an artifact of its time, and we'll take it for what it is. I was supposed to meet her now, Steve continues to think, but I can't, I mustn't. I've got to get her out, I've got to get out of her life forever. 
I've got to find a mission, danger, anything, anything to help me forget. Meanwhile, and as the heartsick Avenger loses himself in the teeming crowd, Swordsman, it is time to Zot Lords. What is this? Be with you in a minute, Batrock, as soon as I show my multi powered opponent who is truly the master of the blade. This last panel on this page is just priceless. It's totally awesome. Great scene here. Uh, great depiction of depth and action as the uh, swordsman is going up against this multi-armed robotic drone that's trying to take him out. It too armed with swords uh, for them. So it shows you just what an amazing swordsman he is. He's able to fight a robot who's wielding four swords and Batrock also able to evade the danger. So these are two physically very capable foes of Cap. Mondu, you're a madman. But they're not enough to hold the swordsman at bay. Ha! No inhuman robot can strike faster than Batrock the Leaper. So he gets out of the way as well. Um, perhaps we should stop here and order some sea monkeys, although I'm not sure what would come. I guess they were brine shrimp. Okay, so uh, uh, the swordsman has deactivated the robot. And uh, they are waiting for the arrival of their third partner. Uh, Batrock has uh, some news for them. No need to summon me, gentlemen. The laser is never far away. I told you he was too dangerous. He forgets his own power. That is precisely why he is needed. So Living Laser here uses one of his laser gauntlets to blast this medieval weapon down in between them, but they easily get out of the way. And you can see a great curvy shot here of his face. Um, I was just testing your nerve, my friends. If we are to be partners, you must both be worthy. The Living Laser chooses his companions with greatest care. Great shot of Batrock here, his super hyper musculature Silence, insolent one. It was Batrock who did the choosing, Batrock who found you and the swordsman, and it's Batrock who is the leader. If any, if any dispute this, let them challenge me now. Swordsman says, my blade is ready. Relax, Frenchie, just keep talking. Living laser kind of cools everyone's tempers. There is a weapon hidden in this city for which a certain nation will pay a million dollars. It is up to us to find it before it is seized by the Americans. Now you're talking our language. So they have, uh, they have a job to do now. They're going to try to find this hidden weapon and get a million bucks for it. Meanwhile, someone else is going to be on the case. Minutes later, in a secret briefing room, this is the weapon which intelligence says an enemy spy has brought into the city. It must be found, and found quickly. Even now, there are other enemy agents who will stop at nothing to get their hands on it before us. You say that the agent who brought it here was captured by S.H.I.E.L.D.? but died before he could be made to talk? That's right, mister. We learned of the bomb from some secret orders that were found in his pocket, but we don't know where it's been hidden. So Cap now has his mission uh, that he needed to distract him from all of his melodramatic emotional troubles. He's going to search the city, presumably New York, for um, signs of this hidden bomb before uh, Batrock and the, uh, his brigade can find it. And the device is called the Seismo Bomb. The Seismo Bomb can cause a shock wave that would demolish the entire city. It's charging up at this very moment. First, there will be three small shocks, and then the big one. And the only lead you have is the location where the spy was captured. I'll head for the spot immediately. Remember, others saw his capture. You might encounter anything. With a menace like that in the city, every second counts. And even if I find it, it could mean my life trying to defuse it. But it's the chance I have to take. On the roost below, three figures. So Cap is springing through the city, and here he finds this um, line stretched between two buildings and this awesome scene that is a callback that our cover calls back to in this panel. He's uh, sliding down the rope uh, to the roof below when he spots Batrock's brigade. So great setup for the coming battle here. Batrock, I'd know, I'd know him anywhere, and the others are. They're turning, they hear me. So as Cap goes to make his landing, he has to evade a swipe from the swordsman, and he does, it's just as swordsman cuts his, um, 
his line that he was using to traverse between the buildings. Sacre nom! Am I never to be free of the shield-carrying Avenger? Not if I can help it, Leaper, Cap replies. But this time, you do not escape alive. So here at this point, um, the swordsman's going to stay behind and delay or stop Cap while Batroc and the laser go on um, and uh, look for the seismo bomb. Cap's trying to convince him that there's bigger things afoot. Listen, you fool. If that bomb goes off, it'll mean your death as well. You don't scare me, Avenger. Batroc will find it in time. Don't count on it, swordsman. Far as I'm concerned, your time has just run out. A second more, and he's and he'd have it. And oh, a second. Cap says a second more, and he'd have had me. So he. This is a great sequence here, where the swordsman comes down with a swipe. Cap deflects it with his indestructible shield, and then punches the swordsman. All right. So now we have uh, the battle continuing between Cap and the swordsman. Haven't you learned your lesson yet, masked man? Lesson? What lesson? Landing the first blow means nothing when you fight the swordsman. And here he trips him up. You're a good Avenger, but nobody is unbeatable, especially you. And if you happen to doubt me, I'll be, I'll be more than happy to prove what I say. This is great, awesome. Kirby is so good with, with tech, with techno fantasy devices and tech in general. And this awesome close-up of the handle of the swordsman's blade with the various buttons for the gadgets that are loaded into it. Really cool. And we can see here he depresses a button and uses some kind of magnetic beam to disarm Cap. His sword has as many built-in devices as ever, Cap thinks. He leaps forward now, shieldless, and the swordsman easily evades him and blasts him again and then follows up with a cool left-handed karate chop. And now, while you're totally off balance, lie there, Avenger. The time has come for the final thrust. And he somehow uses another ray on his shield to send a um, chimney full of bricks careening Cap's way. I told you to lie there. No one can resist a torrent of flying bricks. Great action. Just, just absolute pulse-pounding action from Kirby and Adkins here. It's almost too easy, the swordsman continues. I thought you'd put up a better fight. Sorry to disappoint you, fella, Cap says, looking somewhat defeated. What? You can still speak? I can do more than just speak, Cap says as he springs forward out of danger. Lots more. For all your boasting, you've still never learned when a foe is beaten or when he's just getting his second wind. And it's one, less, and it's one lesson you can only learn the hard way. And Cap KOs him here with a great roundhouse right. You can see the swordsman is, is out as he flies off panel here. What kind of a man are you to side with the enemies of your own country? Does freedom mean so little that, wait, the rooftop, it's quaking. It's starting to quiver. The seismo bomb, it's the first shock wave. Only two more to go before it explodes. So here, Batroc and the living laser um, feel it as well. Batroc, we haven't much longer. We've got to find the bomb. Do not panic, mon ami. We must keep searching. We shall not fail. You can't quiet me with your corny slogans. What happens if we don't find the bomb in time? It is not a most, un it is a most unpleasant thought, mon vieux. I fear we shall all discover that we are very, very dead. And now we have spoken enough, n'est-ce pas? But suddenly Cap finds them and his shield comes careening off from off panel at them. Sacre bleu, he still lives. But no spinning shield can top the greatest leaper of them all. You would have been wiser to flee while you had the chance. But now, for you, it is too late. Great panel here as Batroc does a backward somersault and the shield goes careening by him. It's never too late when human lives are at stake. Laser, move quickly, mon ami. We can't all be leapers, Batroc, Laser says. Quel dommage, you are too slow. So Laser, just like before, Laser tells Batroc, Go on, I'll hold him off, I'll stop him. He's going to make the same mistake that the swordsman made, trying to take Cap on alone. 
So Cap thinks to himself, his laser beam is the deadliest of weapons, but I must defeat it. You get the bomb, Frenchie, Laser says. I'll toy with this overrated Avenger for a while. I'll make him cry, Uncle, and mean it before I polish him off. <laughs> great, great panel here um, with Laser's sneering face, that square jaw, cleft chin. Very cool. Uh, and here he's heating up the ground near Cap Shield so he can't get to it. An awesome panel here with a little bit of a little bit of smoke, almost Kirby crackle going on. We're gonna see more of that. Oh yeah. So Cap here uh, realizes he needs to somehow create a ruse to distract the laser. So with his uh, peak human strength, he tears this uh, railing up and uh, laser thinks he's gonna use it as a weapon. So he blasts it out of his hand. And Cap thinks he's playing with me like a cat plays with a mouse. He's keeping me on the move and enjoying every second of it. And that's just the way I want it. The more I move, the closer I, I get to him. Here's some of that excellent Kirby crackle, which, which covers through um, this panel here. It's just really awesome, worked in with the thought balloons. Now he's edging right up to me. He's confidently moving in for the kill. So this is great story done, kind of Marvel method. I'm sure Stan had a short uh, discussion with Kirby or maybe wrote down a few notes. Kirby throws this thing um, together with brilliant layouts. Um, and then Stan comes back and adds in the dialogue, including these thought balloons, which, which really sync well with the action as, as, as Cap's thought balloons tell us a little bit more about what's transpiring off panel. Say your prayers, masked man. Here's where you get it with both barrels. It's now or never. Even an unarmed target can still fight back. And so Cap just whole body tackles Living Laser, evading both of his laser blasts and more Kirby Crackle here in the corner of this panel. Awesome. And here Cap smashes one, and then in the next panel, the other um, of, of Living Laser's wrist-mounted laser van braces. Without them, you're just another man in a mask. Now, if I can just, what? The second seismo shock. And here, this is a great bit of um, interplay between a defeated villain and Cap. Laser, listen to me. Where's Batrock? I've got to reach that bomb. Okay, so you beat me, for now. I still won't rat out my partners. It's more than a question of loyalty, it means survival. If I don't stop him in, in time, that bomb will destroy the city. And that means all of us. You really mean it. That's why you fought that way. Of course I mean it. Now talk, man. Talk. Okay. Okay, I'll tell you. So Laser realizes, hey, this is a matter of our own survival. He trusts Cap. He tells him. Um, but he also warns him. But you've been battling. You're tired. Batroc's still fresh. Uh, I'd get that bomb even if there were a dozen Batrocs. I dare not fail. So this Cap is 100% mission-oriented. He doesn't care. Nothing's going to stop him. Meanwhile, Batrock, near the warehouse or the manhole cover where, where the seismo bomb is planted, takes out these two guards. And now for the bomb. Once again, see mighty Batrock is triumphant. Hold it. Don't go near that manhole, Cap yells from off panel. Nom du nom. It is Tres Formidabal. You have survived the laser's attack. But not even you have the power to resist Batroc. Wait, listen to me, you fool. Stop. We, oui, Batroc will stop after I have beaten you. Don't you see? This is bigger than a grudge fight. I'm trying to warn you. Merci bien. That is most kind of you. But now I show you what Batroc thinks of your warning. I should have known you wouldn't listen to reason. There's only one way to deal with the likes of you, and this is it. Great shot of, of uh, Cap's fist coming from off panel right into Batroc's jaw, and, and Batroc clenches his teeth in pain. And again, Cap uh, punches him. Ha! Now the arrogant American shows his true colors. Well, Batroc too knows how to deal with Captain America. Not for nothing am I the world's greatest leper. So he leaps into Cap with two fists. 
And here, all right, strong man, if that's the way you want it, I'm through talking. There's only one language you can understand, and I can speak it as well as any man alive. So Cap evades this stuff that's been thrown at him by the Leaper, gets into close quarters with him. Bien, but how much longer will you be alive? Long enough to do what must be done. But then the final pre-shock goes off, blowing this manhole cover off its uh, moorings. That was the third shock. Our time has nearly run out. Within a matter of seconds, the entire city will be a mass of rubble. If you were aware of that, why did you not speak? You granite skulled Gaelic gorilla. What do you think I've been trying to do? After the third shockwave, the bomb is fully triggered. We may already be too late to stop it. Now out of my way, mister. I'm gonna to try to reach it and defuse it or die trying. Die, that is the most unpleasant word. And if you fail, even Batrak will be among the victims. The bomb is yours, mon ami. My so great speed will take me to safety while you stupidly risk your life for the undeserving masses. There was another who gave his life for the masses many centuries ago. And though he was the wisest one of all, he never thought of the humblest living being as undeserving. I think Cap is talking about Jesus there. But anyway... The bomb, I found it. There, right at the top, the emergency destruct button. Now there's only one question which must be answered. How much time still remains? Can I press the button before detonation? I did it. It released a burst of acid eating away at the entire mechanism. The city is safe, but I still cannot rest. I must fight on until the end. Next issue, Cap goes wild. So yeah, our first taste of Cobra uh, of uh, Kirby on uh, Scott Reed's comics. Pretty awesome stuff. Marvel Super Action starring Captain America, number seven. Reprinting Captain America 105. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching Scott Reed's comics. If you did enjoy it, like and subscribe and tell your friends, and I'll bring you more soon. Thanks.